Behold my quest for the perfect three-color swirl bread. Let's see what's cooking. Let's get the facts. Let's see what's cooking. It's time for yo yo Banks 12. Hey, everyone. Now, what I wanted were was bread that looked like these cookies with a nice little swirl in the middle, but with green and brown. This is what I ended up with, uh, like a dolphin fetus. And then this weird alien zebra stripe bread. And then this blob, which is also looks a little like a dolphin. I don't know, I keep seeing dolphins. Now, all three of my attempts use the same bread recipe. It's my kind of go-to bread recipe when I make anything bread related. It is a cup of warm milk in that bowl. There's a large egg yolk blended in there. There's a tablespoon and a half of melted butter. There's also going to be two and a half tablespoons of sugar, a teaspoon of salt, and two and a quarter teaspoons of instant quick rise yeast. And then you blend that together. And then to that, you will add one cup of flour. And I mix that together until I had a paste. Now, because I wanted three colors in my bread, I divided that liquid into three. And I used a kitchen scale just to try to get them just about the same amount in each bowl. So I had three bowls. So the first bowl I added two tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa and then gave that a stir. For the second bowl, I added a tablespoon of matcha powder, green tea powder. I whisked that in and then after I whisked it in, I thought maybe it should be a little darker green. So I added a second tablespoon and then whisked that in. And in the third bowl, I just left it plain because I needed white. So once I did that, you need to make your bread dough. So I added additional tablespoons of flour to that liquid, stirred it around until you obtained um, a dough that's starting. As you can see, it kind of starts to chase the spoon around the bowl a little bit. And once you get to that point, you turn it out onto the countertop and you start to knead it, adding additional little bits of flour until you get a smooth elastic dough that's not that sticky anymore like it's not sticking to your hands very much and not sticking to the countertop so i did that with the white dough and then i did the same thing with the chocolate dough just add a little bit more flour until i got a workable dough and then kneaded it until it was smooth and elastic and then of course the same thing with the green dough a little bit of flour and knead until smooth and elastic then i took each of those dough balls sprinkled them with a bit of flour put them in a bowl had a little bit of flour in the bowl so it won't stick, covered it with plastic wrap and put it in a warm place to rise until doubled. I put mine in my oven with just the oven light on. And after about an hour and a half or so, they've doubled in size. And yes, the bowls have changed because I did this three times. So I used footage from each of my attempts. And there's the brown and the green. And as you'll see here, the plain dough actually rose up quite a bit more than the other two. I don't know why that is. I don't know if something in the green tea powder or the cocoa that just makes it so it doesn't rise as much, but it didn't. So for my very first attempt, this is what I did. Then I took the chocolate dough and using my fingers, I just kind of spread it out into a rough rectangle shape. And I made it the same length as my bread pan brushed on a little bit of milk with a pastry brush. And what this does, the milk helps the layers of dough stick together so you don't get any big air pockets in your bread. I actually used this method when I made my rainbow bread and it worked really well. So I put a green dough on top of the chocolate dough and then I took the plain dough, same thing. I put the green and chocolate on top of it. I debated on which layer should go on the top and which layer should go on the bottom. I brushed more milk on top because when I roll it, I want everything to stick together nicely. And then I rolled it from the long side, like kind of jelly roll style. And then after it was rolled, I did the same thing with all three attempts is I sealed up that center seam along the length of it. And I also sealed up the ends, put it in a greased baking dish, covered it with some greased plastic wrap. And I put it in a warm place to rise for about 45 minutes to an hour until it was doubled in size baked it in 350 degree oven for about 25 minutes until it was golden brown. I let it cool and then I sliced it. And here are the slices. And not the swirl I was looking for. Actually not much swirl at all, really. Kind of just three colors. Second attempt, I decided I'm gonna get fancy here. So I cut it in half. 
So each of those dough colors I cut in half, same idea, rolled them out, threw some milk on top of them, and then I put the layers on. So I did chocolate plain green, and then chocolate plain green, putting milk in between. And then it's kind of hard to roll something this thick. So what I decided to do is I would roll this out with a rolling pin. So seems like a good idea, right? So rolled it out, but when I flipped it over, you can see the chocolate on the bottom didn't roll out very well as much as the other ones did. And I kept rolling and the layers weren't even and yeah, it wasn't going well at all. So I tried to salvage this by stretching the chocolate out. And then I put some more milk on the top of it before I rolled it. So everything sticks nicely together, I rolled it up, put it in a baking dish, allowed it to rise, baked it, let it cool, and then sliced into it to see what we ended up with. I had more hopes for this one. Now, after it was baked, it kind of looked a little like camouflage bread, kind of, because you had all of those camel colors. And I thought maybe I should make camel bread. And you know what, I still might. And then the big slice. So we're getting layers, swirly kind of layers, but then as I kept slicing, things started to look funny and have you ever seen cave paintings where ancient peoples have painted animals and they're kind of mystical animals? So they have weird shapes. Well, I thought this looked like a cave, mystical cave animal or something like that, or some kind of weird green alien zebra or something. I don't know, it did not turn out. So you know what they say, third time's the charm, right? So I did this a third time, same recipe as the other two, except this time I said, ha ha, I'm going to cut into three pieces this time. So I cut each of those dough balls into three pieces instead of two. And I rolled out each portion to a little flat rectangle. And I tell you those chocolate and the tea, green tea ones don't roll out as nicely. And then I layered everything up like I did before with the milk in between. So white chocolate green, white chocolate green, white chocolate green. Same thing. And I also tried the rolling, but I went lengthways this time and I tried to be a little bit more careful. Um, same thing happened though, that bottom layer just did not want to cooperate. But I really tried to get an even roll on this one. And then I rolled it up and then I rolled it up as per usual, except I forgot to put the milk on the top. And as you can see, um, see how it's not sticking, it kept separating there. I said, oh, I forgot the milk. So I added a little bit of milk on the top and then I rolled it up again, put it in a baking dish and then let it rise and then I baked it as per usual, let it cool completely and then I had the third big reveal. And you know what? It still looked a little like camouflage bread from the outside and I thought, oh, this one's gonna be it. Look at the nice little layers I have there. And you know what? I almost, this is almost a swirl. Like it's so close. Um, I found that a couple of the pieces looked a little like, like, like a dolphin fetus in the middle. See, this is the one here. Does it look like a little dolphin with an umbilical cord that goes around? I don't know. This was the best. This one looked the best. I mean, it doesn't look bad. Flavor wise, it's a white bread. It has a little bit of green tea flavor from the green tea and the chocolate you really can't taste. It has a light cocoa-ish flavor to it. This was actually very good with toast, uh, with just butter or even butter and Nutella. You know, so it tasted good. It just, I couldn't get that lovely swirl like I wanted to. I ended up with my, my petroglyph bread and then the lumpy dolphin swirl bread. You know, I did an online search for three color or tricolor bread and or swirl bread. And the only ones I've ever found had two colors, only not three. So I'm wondering if it's just not possible. So what do you think? What do you think I could have done to try to get the perfect swirl bread? Now, I love making bread that has cool patterns and colors in the middle of them. And I've done panda bread, zebra bread, giraffe bread, and I've also done rainbow bread all on a playlist. If you want to see these, go ahead and click on your screen. Thanks so much for watching.